Hey, what's going on YouTube? You are meeting my sister, Rahima Blaza. She is the co-star of Triple Digit Flip with me. She is also my business partner and co-founder at Keegly. Her and I started in real estate together way back in the day in 2002. So I got a, well, and she also used to like change my diapers and take care of me when I was a little baby. So we've got a long history. What's up? <laughs> How are you doing, sweetheart? Good, good. So I get a lot of folks, they're saying, you know, we watch you guys flipping houses and look so much fun. The market is definitely seeing some interesting days, okay. to say the least. So how are you and I and Keegley and our partners all handling the current situation? And, and how long do you propose that we're going to see the reduced activity? I mean, the reduced activity has to, more to do with people's perceptions of what they think an interest rate should be, right? It, it isn't that there's a collapse or there's some impending doom. They're just thinking, well, I could have gotten 3% and now I'm paying 5%. But 5% was actually what people have been paying. That's a very normal, very healthy interest rate. I mean, I, I'm 100% in agreement with you. I think when you have baseline expectations reduced to the level that they were reduced to like you know for five years if you're used to two percent three percent interest rate then five percent all of a sudden seems dramatically high right but you're right five percent is not dramatically high in fact in fact five percent historically is pretty low there's been moments where we've had twelve percent fifteen percent seventeen percent I mean, you're not going to remember this but our parents when we first bought a house in calgary alberta our interest rate was eleven percent that's what we pay for hard money now. 11% is like private money, private money interest. And that was our mortgage right. rate back then right. in the 80s. So 5%, hey, if you think it's going to drop, buy your house and it drops, refi. Right. But what if it goes the other way? What if it just continues to climb? Get in. What are you waiting for? I 100% I agree. And I, you know, I'm looking at where current pendings are and I think that's where it's really important for any of you guys that are flipping houses or wholesalers that are presenting potential deals to fix and flip buyers we want to see where the market is right now we don't want to see where it was six months ago I don't want to see where it was eight months ago I especially don't want you to send me comps from March and April like do not send anybody comps from March and April. Don't even base your ARVs off of sales that happened in March and April. I think March and April of 2022 is going to go down in history as being banana rama banana for, rama. for people's All day. pricing. And I think yes. what you really want to do is you want to take off the table any of the emotional equity. So any house that you saw, say it was listed at 550 and then it sold at 650. So that hundred thousand dollars that was above list price that a flip sold for you want to you want to take that 100k right off the table that 100k isn't real and why i say it's not real is a lender didn't back it a house was listed at 550 and it sold at 650 there's no way it appraised for higher than 550 the lender will never appraise a house for more than what the list price is that's just how it goes right so that hundred thousand dollars isn't lender back value if it's not lender back value that means it's not true value it's emotional equity you want to take that off the table. So don't base your comps off anything that's sold in March. Don't take, base your comps on anything that's sold in April. Take that off the table. If you see a property that got listed and it got bid up in a multiple offer situation and then sold super high. You're talking about the wholesalers, but I want to talk about what a flipper is doing right now because a lot of flippers are hanging on to inventory and they're hanging on to inventory hoping for that price that they thought they were going to get when they started their project. So we bought a house three months ago we're, it's on the market now, it's ready, and we're still uh, attached to what we thought we were going to get back in March or April. What I'm saying to my investors now is let it go. Let it go. Because right now there's opportunities to buy houses that were lower than when we bought those houses for. Let it go. You don't have to make a home run on this one. Make what you need to make. Take a little bit of a haircut if you have to, but maybe just break even or make a little bit on the top and keep moving because you're going to be stuck with this house for three, six, maybe even nine months if you're just not willing to let it go. Let it go. Start over. Pivot. Right. Right. Yeah. No, I, I think Elsa said it best. Let it go.
<laughs> this video is brought to you by Batch Leads. Batch Leads is my favorite software to help you find the best comps for your deals. If you want to figure out how to use it, click the link in the description and go to Batch Leads. Now stop watching me over here and watch me over there. Over here, over there, over there is better. But, but really, <laughs> I think that like for flippers, yes. where you can really gauge your business right now is watch pendings. So if you have a house yeah. in a market right now, say you're, you're a rehabber right now, you've got a house on the market, it's sitting. Well, go look at what's around your property that's pending. Okay, that's gonna give you a real gut check on where your price should be. And then just take the cut, right? Take the haircut. That's, it, you're either gonna take a haircut, you're gonna get shaved, bald, whatever it is, let it, let it go, let it happen. But now you know where your basis is. Now you know where things are going to sell at. Right. And that's it, now you gotta adjust. So that might be five, 10% lower than where you had expected. And that's probably the correction that we're gonna end up seeing in most of these high appreciation, high demand markets where we saw some incredible price spikes. But guys, we went up 30%. If we dropped 10% from the 30, we still did pretty dang good. We still pretty did, we did pretty right? dang good. And so that's the thing I need you to guys to keep in mind, right? That the market's not collapsing. We still have dramatically reduced inventory levels that are coming up. Now, yes, inventory is bloated, but do you know why the inventory is bloated in all these markets? Well, people rushed to their listings. People were rushing to get houses on the market. Well, that hasn't happened since the Great Recession, where people were just flooding the houses with real estate. But after all of that, we're still not in a balanced market. We're still in a seller's market with all, all of that inventory flooding the market. Right. So again, I think you got to stay away from listening to the headlines. You have to pay attention to where pendings are, current pendings, make that pivot and carry forward. That's business. And I think what we really need to talk about is we got used to, at least some flippers got used to doing the bare minimum when they were flipping a house. They weren't, they weren't putting their heart and soul into it. They were just treating all of the houses like pigs with lipstick. Yeah, but you've never done that. I, well, no, but I think that a lot of people were, and I think we, this market situation has to pull you out of that mindset and being like, okay, deliberate design, not breaking the bank, but deliberate design, really thinking about how to maximize the space, thinking about where families, how, what kind of families are buying houses right now, you know, is there space to do an, an additional dwelling unit, is there space to have multi-generational living? thinking about how Americans are living and then doing your flip, not just doing what we've been able to do for the last 10 years, but thinking about today. Great point, great point. And I think that is going to be where the future of fixing and flipping is going. So takeaways from this, right? First and foremost, nothing to be worried about. Our houses are now starting to get showings again. Our flips are going to sell. We may be lowering our prices in some of them, and that's fine. We're still making dramatically healthy property uh, profits, way more profit than we thought we were going to make in the first place. Right. So uh, the second takeaway is let it go, let it go, right? You got to do that. If you are attached to a price and it's not realistic, then cut bait. The next thing I think we got to remind ourselves of is that if you want to get current temperature or current gauge on the real estate market, the pulse is in the pendings. The pulse is in the pendings. That's gonna tell you where things are right now. That's the heartbeat of the real estate market is in the pendings. 5% interest rates are not high. They are normal. In fact, they're on the normal to low side. So it's just gonna take some time for people to start readjusting the way that they think. Beyond that, just get back to work, guys. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, follow me. Re the real Rahima B. I don't know why you don't follow me already. Everybody knows I'm his sister. Everybody knows that we've been working together. Come yeah. on, guys. So follow her on IG. It's the real Rahima B on IG. She also has a pretty shitty YouTube channel <laughs> that I'm gonna um, start working on. So <laughs> let's 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 help that situation. So uh, what's your YouTube? It's like it's not it's not even YouTube.com/slash/Rahima. Uh, it's so bad. It's her 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 channel is so small they won't even let her have a cool YouTube uh, channel name. So go into the description and go subscribe to her channel. She's gonna be giving you guys a ton of design tips, a ton of fix and flip ideas, and you're really missing out if you're not gonna get the behind the scenes fix and flip coaching from this wonderful woman. Thank you, sweetheart, I love you.
Bye, guys. Hey, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe and stop being boobs.